When the storm came, my husband flared up a coconut tree. I couldn't leave my children behind. I put them in the boat behind me, and I tied it to a coconut tree. I hung on to the boat and the tree all night. As the water rose, I kept moving the rope up the trunk. I don't know what we have done to deserve this punishment. This monk found a place to hide in the temple. When the storm passed, he left his hiding place to discover he was the only one left. He walks from village to village looking for a place to stay. This man is the only one who made it out of the storm alive. Everyone else in his village perished. He is the lone survivor. This woman couldn't find the words to explain her pain. All she could do was cry at the memory of all she has lost. The recent cyclone in Burma was a terrifying display of our unstable planet. But this natural disaster was made even worse in the hands of an evil military government. The official response was to lock the area down and tell the world to look the other way. But how could anyone look away? Cyclone Nargis had a storm tide of 4 meters. As far as 64 kilometers inland, waves washed away homes, livestock, and families. The salt water left behind will make this land useless for farming for years to come. This former breadbasket is now a wasteland. In this desolate situation, people are still determined to survive. Some have moved back to their broken houses. They drink water from polluted wells. The bones of fish boiled again and again keep them alive for another day. It's in this place that you and I get the chance to present Jesus to the desperate and the dying. Today on Continuum, we take you underground in a covert operation to transform a community. This is the model we will reproduce in villages across Burma as we take this nation for Jesus. Last week on Continuum, when Cyclone Nargis hit Burma on May 2, 2008, our ministry team sent Burmese student John back into Burma to locate loved ones and bring help to cyclone survivors. We're just amazed because really this isn't something that happens in that particular region. Most of the cyclone clones go up into Bangladesh and stuff like that. So, you know, you don't really think about Burma, that they're going to get into this sort of trouble. 
We got together to see what plans we could put, come up with for sending him back into Burma, basically to assess what the situation was, where the needs were, what the availability of getting items in there and uh, outside support. Our missionaries emptied their bank accounts, it's the only money we had around, and uh, they put it all in John's hand and they sent him back into the country to, with a couple thousand dollars initially to begin to help whoever he could find that needed help. So it was just us in, in a scrambled attempt to put whatever means in his hands possible to get him into that nation to accomplish what was required. John, a second year student at our Bible college in Thailand, went into Burma to locate his family and somehow bring relief to cyclone survivors. Only Burmese nationals were allowed entrance into Burma. A week after the cyclone, corpses that were once floating on the tops of rivers and wells had sunk from view. Villagers awaited help from their government, but no help had come. Their survivors were starving and desperate. Their stockpiles from previous harvests had been washed away. Most of their animals were dead, and the salty seawater had destroyed their crops. After days of waiting, thirst overcame their fear of disease, and villagers began drinking from wells polluted with the dead. They were eating whatever they could find. Fish bones and pig swill became sustenance. And it just kept raining. What was left of the villagers' homes provided no shelter. The storm had destroyed the bamboo they would normally use to rebuild their homes. Surrounded by rivers, with no way of escape, the villagers were trapped. The most likely future for them was a slow death by disease and starvation. It was places like this that John was traveling to. He had less than $2,000 in his pocket but he was determined to bring life to those who had been abandoned by their government and left for dead. Travel was dangerous. No one was allowed to move in or out of the Delta. Soldiers manned the roadblocks and those who tried to leave were warned at gunpoint to return home. But with no place to return to and desperate for food, Many of the homeless camped on the shoulders of the main roads. They shouted at passing vehicles, begging for food. Though some Burmese tried to help their countrymen, there were just too many victims. It made me really sad in my heart, you know. I saw the people are living on the mud and sleeping on the mud, sleeping with animals, and when I see them, their light is uh, lower than animal, but I really want to help those people. But the government is still uh, prohibiting the support from the outsider. So how are we going to do? Those people are going to die, definitely. The needs were overwhelming, but John accepted the responsibility to help the dying. John was on a dangerous mission. If caught by the military, John could face imprisonment or death because the suffering were to be left alone to die. Definitely I would be in a jail and no ways to go out.